So we await now the guests of honour to be introduced to the teams. They'll be led out by Mr. Saburo Kawabuchi, the president of the, the JFA. And the main guest of honour this evening is Her Imperial Highness Princess Takamoto, the honorary patron of the JFA. With her is uh, Dr. Nicholas Leos, president of Congobol, Joseph Mifsud, member of the uh, UEFA Executive Committee representing UEFA, Hiroshi Akuda, chairman of the Toyota Motor Corporation, Fujio Cho, president of the Toyota Motor Corporation. So you can see it's quite a, quite a lengthy ceremony these guys have to go through. But for the moment, we're uh, having close-ups not so much of the dignitaries, but of the players themselves. So the honor's done. Princess Takamoto leads them off. And by our clock, we're slightly behind schedule, but uh, no doubt we can catch up. So the fair play handshakes. Then we'll have team photographs. Then we'll have another check on the way these uh, two are going to play. So the smoke clearing, the banners being cleared, the arena opening up. Let's have a look at the way AC Milan will line up. That's giving Kakar a very, very uh, big responsibility behind Shevchenko and Thomason. So it's going to be interesting to see how the young Brazilian stands up to it. Boko is short of a midfield creator since they lost Riquelme. They're trying to use Donet and Cassini in that role. But they're a much less experienced team. Referee tonight is Valentin Ivanov, 42-year-old teacher from Moscow. And the assistants are from Russia and from Bulgaria. UA from Commonwealth take it in turns to do the honours in the middle. The two captains are spinning the coin. Very little wind. Great night for football. Pitch is great. And we hope for some excellent entertainment in this wonderful stadium here in Yokohama. And that's a phenomenally successful coach, Carlos Bianchi, who came here, of course, with Vélez and led them to victory against AC Milan and also led his team to victory against uh, Real Madrid. Ancelotti's been here as a player for AC Milan. Will he end up as a successful coach here? Amazing record these guys have got. And Shevchenko, their leading scorer, AC Milan, he's got 12 goals already this season, so he's clearly one of the obvious threats. And there's the man with uh, certainly a lot of attention being paid to him these days, Kaká, who scores quite a few goals. And this is the guy, for the moment, who can't get onto the field, Carlos Tevez. These guys could still be key factors in the outcome of this 24th Toyota Cup. So it's Bocca's kickoff. So we're on the move of the 24th European South American uh, contest for the Toyota Cup. AC Milan versus Boca Juniors. AC Milan playing in their all-white strip, the same strip that they played in in the European final against Juventus at Old Trafford. A good luck sign, they say. Competing here for two trophies, the Toyota Cup, which has been going since 1980, 
and the Intercontinental Trophy, which was established in 1960. Prize money, TV rights, and of course, huge amount of international prestige. AC Milan have had pretty well everything their way as they built up for this one. They've got a bigger squad, they've had uh, better form, if you like, and they've uh, had certainly a better journey here. Boca lost a lot of players after the Copa Libertadores. They had a terrible journey here from Buenos Aires of uh, almost 36 hours with a big delay of six hours in Los Angeles. And they haven't got their key player, the player they say who is as close as you can get, if you're ever going to get there, to Diego Maradona. Tevez is not quite fit enough. He hasn't played since November the 2nd. But let's see how it settles down early on. Once or twice, Boca have caught out their illustrious European uh, opponents by some quick, intelligent play. He led very early on, if you remember, against uh, Real Madrid when uh, they scored two goals in the first eight minutes. Clever stuff there by Pielo. So it's four at the back for AC Milan with Brazilian goalkeeper Dida here who's conceded very few goals this season. Unbeaten in the in Serie A. There's Bancaro put out by Scarby. Kaká to Maldini. Costa Curda, who's been brought into the side because of the injury to Nesta. Schiavi gets up well, just. But here comes Kaká! Now, that's the sort of thing he's very good at and uh, has already demonstrated that he can score from outside the area with some ease. So, playing just behind the front two. Good ball, not well cleared by Schiavi. Kaká picks it up, hits it too high. there by the young Brazilian, Sadov, Pankaro, Shevchenko, a little bit irritated there, perhaps it was a pass that got him going. Shevchenko playing alongside uh, Thomason on this occasion, Inzaghi not quite fit enough for this contest, although he's on the bench. Costa Curda with Cafu on the right goes down the left-hand side to Sadov. Quickly closed down, but it's Sadov again to Thomason. Gattuso chased by Shevchenko. He's got speed, but I don't think he's got quite that much. And it's away by Clemente Rodriguez, held up by Yale, the Brazilian playing up front. Might not have been in the side had uh, Tevez been fit. Try to hit it wide, but it comes to Sadov. Now, this is danger here for Real, uh, for the Argentine side. Scalotto picks it up. He'll be the point man for Boca. This is Donet, Cassini, Yali, Scalotto, but in a bit of cul de sac here. It's won by Gattuso. Keeping possession. Well, there's getting goalkeeper Dido going all the way there. That was Costa Curta with that somewhat rash back pass. You may remember, if you've got a, a taste for history, that Costa Curta didn't have a particularly good game when he played here against Vela Sarsfield. And two errors let him in. Let uh, Vela's in and... Uh, they lost the game. He committed a foul and they scored from a penalty. And then a bad back pass, he led in a side. But that was a long, long time ago. And uh, Costa Curta has won many trophies, played many good games since then. Still a little bit hazy from the fireworks that we had earlier. Cassini gets in there, Donet, but uh, Boca really haven't got control of it. Here's Maldini, nice bit of play. Now, Pereira, the Colombian, tough tackle as he tried to clear it. Looking towards the referee as if he should get a free kick, he's not. 
Pirlo. Maldini. That's a booking, the first of the game for the Colombian Correa for that late challenge on Sadov. Sadov turned him and beaten him, and down he went. That's an early yellow card and a worry for the number 14, Luis Pereira. Brought into this side because he had a little bit more experience, but that was rash inexperience. Here. The Russian referee uh, delaying things until he's uh, got things sorted out. Now then, Pirlo. Pankaro, he's got a decent cross in here. Not a particularly good cross. Now it's picked up by Yale. He's the front man, he's got no support. He'll have to go a lot if he's going to do anything. And still has it. Now he's got support on the left hand side. That's much better. This is Kanya, the captain. Battaglia is in support as well. Square. That's Battaglia. Kanya. This is looking more promising for Boca. They need to, because they're younger and although they've got some pretty good battle honours, they haven't got anything like the experience of AC Milan. They need a good bit of possession to get their game going. Schiavi beaten there by Shevchenko. Set off with a cross, but it was a poor one. Nice bit of play by AC Milan, getting in the Dutchman down the left-hand side. Shevchenko, good play. Beating Schiavi. Well done by Donet, but the flag has gone up for offside. The referee has acknowledged it and says, uh, play on. Pirlo, Shevchenko and Thomason working hard out here. That's another foul. Free kick. Cassini apologizes, but it was actually Berdiso who committed it. Kaká driven back, Maldini, clever play. He's got Panker on his left hand side. This is Sadov. This is Pirlo, and into the arms of Abondensieri, who's been to this uh, Toyota Cup three times, but this is the only time he's played. He was twice reserved for uh, Boca Juniors. That's a free kick to the Argentine side. So far, his team has had most of the possession. Battaglia and Cania. Cania forward for Barres Escalotto. Cania retrieves it here. With Battaglia. Burdiso chasing. Wide to Clemente Rodriguez, and his control wasn't good enough, and he should have lost possession, really. But he's uh, going up in support of Yali, but Yali loses possession to Gattuso and Kaká, and it's some good play by AC Milan. Kaká loses it, and off we go again. A little bit damp on the surface, but the pitch here in excellent condition. Used in midweek for an international. Japan against Korea. But no sign of wear and tear. It's a difficult one from uh, Perea. And away by Dida. But Dice almost making an error there. Clemente. Clemente Rodriguez did well. And they begin to get a little bit of a grip in midfield. Boca, but losing out there to Sedov. No one wide on the right and clear offside. So far, so good for Carlos Bianchi. If he wins another title, he'll be the most successful South American coach ever. I think he's looking for a little bit more support from the terraces. It's not like this in. La Bombonera in Buenos Aires. There's a knot of Boca fans on our right-hand side. You can probably hear the singing. He's not singing, that's Inzaghi, who hasn't played for some time because of a 
a left leg injury. Cafu on the right hand side for AC Milan's hardly been in the game. Cafu, of course, played on this field for Brazil and captained them. That was aimed for Cafu, but fell well short. Shevchenko aimed for Thomason. Good tackle by Schiavi. Free kick to Boca. Catuzo penalised. Now Costa Curta in the middle with Maldini. They certainly have the advantage of height. It's been one of Boca's problems since Palermo left. They haven't really had a big striker. Donet, Bodiso, uh, Battaglia rather. Good ball quickly to Gattuso. Here's Shevchenko, he's got the pace but not quite the control. Iali will chase this one with no chance. So we've had one shot at this stage and that was Kaká over the bar. Quite tentative at the moment as they spar for control in midfield. Jale loses out now. Here's uh, Kaká. Kaká still going. Not quite strong enough. Picked up by Pereira. Donet does well to get away from his man. That's a good ball to Schilotto. Couldn't quite control it quick enough. He's been out for some time through injury. He might well be short of a bit of match practice and sharpness. Dida with a big one. Pull away by... Uh, Verdiso offside against probably two, but certainly Scalotto was interfering with play. AC Milan, their fifth occasion here at the Toyota Cup. And Scalotto with Guillermo, his first name on his shirt. It's his third occasion here. As they played around with a bit of patience. Some pressure there from Scalato. Good ball to Pankaro. Pankaro driving forward. He's getting into the danger area. Now chance for Kaká. Get a good ball. In. Not good enough. Whistle had already gone for offside. So they were going to delay Kaká's uh, transfer from Brazil, but because of uh, other interests from um, European clubs, they brought it forward and then thought they'd introduce him quite slowly into the team. Well, he's been so relaxed, so successful in any time he came on, that now he's in the starting lineup here for a very big occasion for him. Well won by Pankaro, but out it goes. So AC Milan's fifth third of Cup, two wins and two defeats. Costa Curta and Maldini played in all of those. Free kick. Dangerous play. The game is held up a little bit uh, while uh, Battaglia comes off for some treatment, but the uh, referee says no, uh, get on with it. So they're one down at the moment. Boca. Correa. Put out. Looks like a head wound to Battaglia in probably that occasion. Cafu, one of the first occasions he's actually touched the ball, so he's making the most of it, having a little bit of a, a run and possession. Good play by the Brazil captain. Nice little touch to Gattuso. But one back well by Boca. Schilotto, the point man back there working in midfield. Is Kanya. Iali, bit naive that one against uh, a defender of that class. Two centre backs for Milan are 37 and 34. But uh, they certainly look as if they've got a few games left in them yet. 
And Battaglia is back on with uh, a pretty obvious bandage around his head. Scudotto got it, but it was off the back of his head and he didn't really know where it was. Here's Cafu. Cafu again too strong for Thomason and Shevchenko. And they haven't really got the link up going at the moment. Shevchenko and Thomason have had little service. Well played by uh, Perea now, Battaglia, the bandage one. And not so good as he looked for his captain Diego Cania over there. Perhaps uh, he's not seeing too well after that. He's on his way to Spain after this game. This is the last game for Boca Juniors. Forward goes uh, Shevchenko, getting behind Pereira almost. Battaglia coming in, but it's Sedov who got it first. Nice little play, deep cross and out, but Shevchenko with a beautiful touch there to get the ball into a position for a cross. Excellent. He said in the man of the moment, 12 goals in 12 Serie A games. In goes Battaglia. But the rebound is for Gattuso and Sedov. Nicely played down to Maldini and Pankaro. Sedov again. He's in the middle of most things, but uh, trying to get... Thomas on the way, he wasn't accurate enough. He's pretty tight down this left-hand side. Costa Curta, great first-time ball to Kaká. Lays it off to Cafu, now they can get forward. Shevchenko down the right-hand side. Kaká is still recovering somewhat slowly, he's in possession now though. Drifted by Battaglia. And there's a good chance for Pankaro to get a good cross in. Manage it. Crosses haven't been good from this left hand side. Pirlo, too strong, and the danger's over. Kanya to Schilotto. Free kick. Schilotto's got a, uh, a twin brother, Gustavo, who played in the first game here when uh, Boca beat Real Madrid. He's now playing for another Argentine side. Trying to take it quickly, knocked back to Iali. Tight marking by Milan, and the foul on uh, Schilotto. Is this a booking? It is. Well, Schilotto turned quite nimbly. Kakar hit him one way and then Gattuso the other. So it's a free kick with Cassini, the expert here, and they're very well rehearsed, these free kicks of Boca. They get the big guys in the middle and uh, they do a bit of a whirl. Schiavi's in there. Bodiso's in there, so is Battaglia. This is danger for AC Milan. Cassini with a kick. And here's Donet. Good effort. They rehearsed that one in training yesterday, in which the big guys went forward, left a gap behind, and he hit it long to Donet, who breaks away. He's given a bit of space. He hits it pretty well, and it's the first corner of the game to be taken by Iali. And again, Boca are good at these. Up goes Schiavi. It's a good save, a good header. And they're still in there. Here's Iali again. Still there, but away comes Kaká, picked up by Perea. And now the counter-attack could be on with Shevchenko bursted by his man. Good challenge. And suddenly the game burst alive with uh, a wonderful save from Dida from Schiavi's header. Gattuso to Cafu is Sedov. Strong gets it away. Battaglia 
gets the ball but loses possession. Another good one from Costa Curta. And that's out. Well, I must say, I'd like to see that um, corner again. Here it is. Schiavi gets up well. Now, this is a good save. Very difficult ball. Best moment of the game so far. So AC Milan have had most of the possession. The, the best chance has fallen to Boca Juniors. Kenya working very hard to keep that in, but to no avail. Dita's getting some dodgy passes, making him work. Now, Cassini, we haven't seen too much of him in the, the first few minutes or so, but his free kicks to certainly got things going. Perea. It's all down the right hand side though for Boca. Sedov, lovely touch to Pirlo. Sedov. Great maneuvering and room making. Pirlo to Cafu. Pirlo's putting himself about a bit more, and I think they need that. Because they've been caught by Boca's industry in midfield. Ford goes uh, Iale, that's a hard one with Maldini playing in his accustomed left back position, but it's another interesting one for Dida. They're making him work. Well, he's had one good save and uh, three or four bad back passes. Cassini. Now, uh, Thomason's after uh, Schiavi. He must be careful what he does. It's not a great clearance because it means that Cafu's got quite a bit of space down that right hand side now. Shevchenko's in the middle. Thomason's dropped back just behind him. Kaka's in there too. And now Gattuso. Cut out by Rodriguez. Battaglia on his left. Rodriguez beaten. By Gattuso and through the middle for Shevchenko and now Thomason. Mistake there by the Boca defence, but a quick response and they are ahead. AC Milan hits the first one, but Boca should have cleared it. Tremendous long ball to Shevchenko, put forward in, in to the middle and into the back of the net. Well, that was fast. That was rapid. Some wonderful play there. It was, it seemed, Boca's ball in midfield. Put forward superbly by Pirlo. Shevchenko let it go, or did he? And Thomason put it in. It looked like an error at the back but it was a wonderful first-time ball forward. And they're in the lead, and it's John Dahl Thomason with the goal. Great ball from Pirlo. Shevchenko couldn't quite get there, but Thomason could, and it's 1-0. So Thomason, who's come into the side really because uh, Inzaghi is not fit, but uh, to be fair to him, he's made a big contribution during the course of the season because Inzaghi has been uh, quite erratic in terms of his fitness, not in terms of his uh, goal scoring. And uh, they pulled off a, a great trick here. Now, did Shevchenko mean to give it to him? That's the test. Or did he actually miss it? I think he, he missed it. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Sedorf, Cafu. Now, Gattuso. Almost. Nice one from uh, Sedorf. Cafu again, that's a great run. And into the middle goes Thomason. Here's Shevchenko. Missed it. Kaká, space here for Pirlo. 
And now Gattuso over the top. But they're very sharp, very, very sharp indeed, uh, AC Milan. And it's quite spiky out there. But the referee didn't like the challenge as uh, Gattuso shot, so he's given a warning to the two of them, but it's actually a corner because it deflected off, uh, I think it was Cassini. Now Peel over the corner. That was so dangerous, I don't think anybody knew what that was. Certainly not the Boca defence. Kanya trying to get some life back into this uh, Argentine side because if they can see another one here, they're out of it. That was so simple. Sadov with this one. Good deep one. Got away by Donet. Iali can't get a foot to it. It's an up and under and out, is it? No, it might not be. It is now. So a brilliant counter-attack by AC Milan. Gives them an early lead, the early advantage here. Shevchenko looked as if he had the better opportunity, but it was Thomason who put it in. That's a throw to Boca. Plenty of flags, plenty of colour, not a huge amount of noise. Capacity here is 72,000 normally, but on this sort of occasion it's uh, considerably reduced. But still bigger than the National Olympic Stadium in Tokyo, where this event, of course, was held for many years. Free kick. Foul by Perea. Now Pirlo. Sadov almost got there, but it's Donet. Not quite able to control it quick enough, and AC Milan combining well. Sadov can't get there, though. Gordiso. Kanya. Iali and... Schilotto have really not done too much up front. Iali trying to move from flank to flank. Schilotto running into a brick wall. Rodriguez, Battaglia, Rodriguez again. This is better. Schilotto. Oh, and Iali almost got a foot to it. There's a chance hit by Danette. And they have equalised. Matthias Donet pulled into the side because he could give it a little bit of an edge, has equalised. Well, he hardly did well to get a foot to that, but that was a lovely move down the left-hand side between Rodriguez and Battaglia, and suddenly it came wide to the right-hand side, and Donet puts it in. just at a time when they looked to be under control. Nice little ball, Iali does well to get a foot to it. The goalkeeper palms it away into the empty net by Matthias Donet. 1-1, good ball. Nice little touch by Iali. And a fairly easy finish by Donet. Well, you're saying that uh, Escalotto and Iali hadn't done much, but they did plenty there. And you can imagine the Boca contingent, not only those on the terraces, but the commentators around where I am are going absolutely crazy. You can hear him from here to Buenos Aires, I would have thought. But here come Milan again, Cafu. Bad control by Thomason. Iale, so quiet, and suddenly that touch got Matthias Donet in. So, 1-1. One, one. Pirlo. It's interesting because Boca have been short of goals in the latter part of the stages of this uh, season. They've um, won 
the Argentine Championship and won it quite comfortably some time ago. But now Carlos Bianchi knows that his uh, side are back in it. Away by Schiavi to Pirlo. And forward goes Thomason. Should be back in again. Away by Schiavi. Picked up by Kaká. Oh, off the post. Brilliant piece of play by the 21-year-old Brazilian. So it's Boca who uh, have escaped. Now, Pirlo's having a fantastic game in the midfield, I must say. Kaká forward again. And Shevchenko almost onto the end of that one. This is really lively stuff. The goal each, and it could have been another one for Milan. Goalkeeper well beaten. Tremendous game now, though. Forward again, and... Uh, Cafu can't quite get there. Great shot. Desperately unlucky. So a goal in the 24th minute, a goal in the 29th minute. It's all to play for. And Boca needed that because they hadn't looked too lively up front. A couple of set pieces and a couple of bad back passes from the uh, Milan players were the only thing they had to encourage them. But that was an excellent piece of play. First of all, with uh, Battaglia and Rodriguez down the left-hand side. Good pass by Schilotto. Nice little touch by Ali leaping there. And an easy finish by Donet, who's in possession now. Bravo. kick Pirlo good ball to Sadov nobody really on the right hand side unless he has to come back to Cafu Battaglia got in there but it's still Milan in possession Pirlo and loses out could have given it more simply free kick And they're saying that uh, Gattuso should be uh, penalised for that. But we think that Gattuso has got one yellow card, but we're not too sure. We need to confirm that later. Correa. Correa coming for the return. Kakab doing well, but it's hooked into the middle. And Dida has to work. came here and uh, beat Real Madrid 2-1 then uh, the following year they were back again and uh, lost to Bayern Munich in a not particularly exciting game when uh, Delgado their main striker was sent off and they played most of the game with 10 men which was uh, a considerable disadvantage of course at this level and I suppose they did well to keep it to 1-0 and that was a late goal but uh, this is much more open although you must say that AC Milan looked the better team in midfield. Play on, no foul. But Boca are coming more into it. Cassini, we need to see more of him. And Kanya, the captain, who's playing over the left hand side here. That's Kanya. Rodriguez, when he gets down the left hand side, is very dangerous. But Overdid it. Set off to Kaká. Still there. Battaglia wins. No. Free kick. Back they all come. Tall and gangling Kaká, but uh, he certainly got plenty of cohesion and a lot of good ideas. The 
free pushing Scalotto back. Two cars on the edge of the area. Shevchenko gets over the far side, switching with Thomason as Pirlo tries to pick a man out. It's Cafu taking uh, no risks at the moment. Gattuso, Costa Curda pumping a big one in. It's going to be picked up by Pankaro. Zedorf. Challenged by Battaglia. Not good enough there. Scalotto does well. Play on. Maldini using his strength superbly. Now, Tanya. Battaglia. Oh, that's a hard one. He was expecting him to be farther advanced, but he wasn't. That was a giveaway, and uh, his coach doesn't much like that. They've regained a little bit of momentum, certainly regained some confidence with that equaliser. They don't want to give it away now. There's always Tevez, of course, to bring on. And they certainly will if there's a half a chance. Pankaro with the car moving here. Two against one. Now one against one, and a free kick. Ah! Kaká doesn't really come from the traditional background of uh, star Brazilian footballers. His father's an engineer and his mother's a math teacher. He comes from a very well-respected uh, and, uh, that's how they say, well-off, but uh, a good middle-class background. And uh, if he wasn't going to be a footballer, there was plenty of other options open to him. But I think uh, the die is cast. We know what he's going to be doing in the next uh, few years or so. Well played by uh, AC Milan, keeping possession in difficult circumstances. Kaká out to Seydorf. Seydorf two against one. Now he needs help probably from behind him. It's not much to his liking, that decision. So throw it to Boca. That's a lousy one for Ayali. And Shevchenko stands there looking a little bit disconsolate. Pirlo wasn't great control, but he almost regained it. Pankaro down for Thomason. It's a bit scruffy at the moment. It's just in front of the back four. But the game, in many ways, has passed him by. Italia does well to get it, but it's an easy one for Gattuso. Through to Thomason. Play on, despite the foul. Referee waves it on. Maldini. Just at the time when uh, AC Milan looks like they were getting easy control, here goes uh, Shevchenko, but although he's quick, he's not that quick. Donet does well to get it forward to Iali. Nimble, quick. Scalotto, this is better play from Boca. Back again to Donet, but Milan have closed him down, but uh, Scalotto's moving well to make a little bit of space. Couldn't get the cross in past uh, Maldini. The Milan captain, but he worked very well there. His third Toyota Cup. He was injured in the first one and came on only as a substitute in a, in a victory and then uh, played alone when they were playing with 10 men in a defeat against uh, Bayern Munich. Oh, here goes uh, Donet, but there's a uh, holding there and a free kick. fans continue their singing where they'll sing whether they're winning or losing 
It's Kulonto there doing a bit of protesting to the assistant referee. Free kick against Pereira. The Argentine coach doesn't like it. He felt his man was holding a position, taking a position, and the other guy was backing into it. But here's a good turn here by Gakar. Too much. Schiavi. And there's uh, an injured player down as uh, Gakar ponders. The goal, perhaps, that uh, he might have had when they hit the post. And it's uh, Luis Pereira, the Colombian, who's hurt. Looks like he's clogging knee and uh, ankle there. So for Boca. Five Copa Libertadores, three of them in four years, two Intercontinental Cups. 1-1 one, one here, when they looked as if they were losing the initiative. They've lost a player just at this moment. If he's going to get treatment, he's going to get it off the field. They're down to ten. Throwing it down the line to safety so that it will give them a little bit more time and Pereira will come back onto the field. And indeed, he'll take the throw in. It's been a tremendous resurgence by Boca in the last few years, uh, mainly due to two people, uh, Mauricio Macri, the president, who has reorganised the club on, on very successful, strict business lines with uh, uh, a very good youth development scheme, and, of course, the coach, Carlos uh, Bianchi, who's had success after success. And although he left them in 2001 and had a year away from the game, Boca didn't win a single thing in the time he was away. Pereira does well to keep it in. He's pursued by uh, Thomason, and he wins the throw. Pirlo. Push but a neat turn. Been very nimble in midfield. Excellent ball. But the push by Schiavi was not appreciated either by Thomason or the referee. And uh, it's a free kick. Pirlo has players on the left flank if he wants to get a cross in if he wants to go for the middle he's got three players there closely marked into the middle Schiavi gets a foot to it but it's going to come to Pancaro who is rather lazy with that cross not for the first time good header by Maldini who's moved from left back into central defense so comfortably what a star but a free kick. It's come into the game quite well. Schilotto in the last uh, 15, uh, 20 minutes. Played a part in that equaliser. Now Cassini with the kick. None of the big guys going up. Well, just now they are now, so he's waiting a little bit. Now it's going to be a short, and Berdiso actually comes all the way back again. So that seems a little bit of a waste. Cassini. Schilotto, good play in a short area. And Gattuso shows a little bit of energy there, although he hasn't been that obvious in midfield, usually on the right-hand side. Gets a rebound, gets a throw. That's a difficult one for Thomason. Doesn't get it. Gattuso in there to win it. Pirlo, nice first-time ball to Cafu. Two minutes of time added on in this half. Sedorf, closing moments then as Pancaro gets it in. Yali 
gets a foot to it. He's on his own completely. Good play. Here come Boca. Battaglia. Scalotto to Iali is too quick. No foul. Now they're caught out. Play spread. But that was a poor pass, and it's Boca back in possession. As we move into added time here, where Boca have certainly come to life at a time when it looked as if they might go under. Iali. And uh, Rodriguez, good play. Kanya's gone inside. Rodriguez, Kanya, but he couldn't control it, didn't know which way he was coming. Now, for a late break, here come uh, Milan with Kaká. Too much, no, he's still got it. No, it's a foul. A little bit overindulgent there by the young Brazilian. Chase by Yali with Maldini with no chance. So in the closing seconds, we've just about got time for one last Milan assault. They will wonder perhaps why they aren't actually leading clearly here, but in many ways they've lost the initiative in the last uh, 20 minutes or so. And there is the whistle for the end of a first half. Very interesting 45 minutes in which uh, AC Milan seemed to have a lot of midfield control and uh, scored first through uh, John Dahl Thomason. And then Boca showed their courage and their guts when they came back with a nicely worked goal for Matthias Donet within uh, five minutes. After that, it's been quite even. We can say that uh, AC Milan have hit the post and Dida has made a very good save from Schiavi, but for the moment it's still very even. The half-time score here in Yokohama is AC Milan 1, Boca Juniors 1. Welcome back to Yokohama, the International Stadium, as we're about to kick off the second half of this 24th Toyota Cup. And we're away. AC Milan in white in the strip. They played the Champions Cup final uh, last uh, summer at Old Trafford beating Juventus, of course, on penalties. Shevchenko getting the key winning uh, penalty. And Boca in their blue and yellow, as usual. 1-1, both sides unchanged. No substitution so far, although we've seen uh, Inzaghi lining up. We've seen uh, Costa Curta lining up and um, warming up. So uh, we expect the possibility. But we wonder also, will Carlos Tevez be brought on for Boca Juniors? Because he's the person everybody's talking about here. Thomason and Shevchenko didn't quite work out. Battaglia plays it wide to Kanya. Yali couldn't make it. And Gattuso has it off him. Thomason. No foul. Cassini gets it away. And Donet, the goal scorer, up to Scalotto. Sadov is penalised. Well, there's a, a choice there, but the nearest one is the, is the one they're all hoping will get on. He hasn't played since November the 2nd. He's the player they say is the closest to Diego Maradona they've had. And he turned the... Copa Libertadores second phase in their favour. They won seven games on the trot. Battaglia. Forward goes Shevchenko and Thomason. Here's Kaká. Set off. Oh, that 
was uh, slack. Not sure what he was trying to do there, but it was poor control and judgment, which is unusual for him. A player with a record of having won the Champions League with three different clubs. And of course, he's had success here with Ajax and uh, with Real Madrid. Thomason doesn't quite get it clean, and it's uh, picked up by Rodriguez, who showed some great drives down that left-hand side on occasion in the first half. Here's uh, Yali, who gets himself into a bit of a knot. Yali is a Brazilian who uh, played for Paysandu against Boca in the Copa Libertadores. So impressed coach Carlos Bianchi that he, he bought him. It's unusual for Brazilians to play well in Argentine football. It's usually a bit rough and tough for them, but uh, he's come out, come out of it quite well. But they've been short of strike uh, players since Delgado went to Mexico after the Copa Libertadores. Here's Yali going for this. Almost got there. Pirlo, who I don't think has hit a pass wrong in the game so far. Cassini wins it. But it's Pirlo to Pancarola left back. Pirlo wriggles his way out of trouble. He's having to come all the way back. Be interested to see how many passes he's made in this game. But uh, Gattuso loses it for him. That's a hard one for Pereira to go for, and he won't get it. So Shevchenko, the top scorer by a mile in the AC Milan side this season, but uh, not too many chances so far here. A Bonsieri to Pereira, well that's a bad one, took a bit of a gamble with that, Schiavi helps it on. But they've hardly got it under control. Now it's back again, but uh, now it's Shevchenko. Shevchenko on the run, down he goes. He really latched onto that error and drove forward. He looked as if he was in with a shout. And uh, one wonders if there could be a, a card here for Berdiso. But Shevchenko saw the wide of the goalpost and went for it. And it means now the Boca are in danger from uh, a number of uh, free kick specialists. Well, Pirlo, Sedov, is not going to take it. And uh, Shevchenko himself with what looks like the longest run at it when the wall is sorted out. There's going to be problems here for Abondentieri in the Boca goal. It's Pirlo deflected and we'll have a corner. In the circumstances, no, the, the assistant's flag is going wild here there's a little bit of a dispute about what's going on but we will have the corner after all right all the Boca players coming back uh, except uh, Scalotto into defensive positions short one Gattuso and Pirlo play on poorly cleared they could have got it away better now Sadov's under a bit of pressure they force it back, but Boca should have had possession a lot longer than that. Cassini said it wasn't a good one either. Pirlo, it's a good ball, but Cafu's having to chase it into the corner. Deep one, away by Cassini. Gattuso, good play. Foot in there by Schiavi. 
and Berdiso, 22-year-old, playing in his third Toyota Cup. Donet, hard one for Yali, an impossible one for him. Got to be able to hold it and uh, hit it more cleanly than that. Catuzzo looks a bit like a uh, character out of the um, Musketeers sagas, but uh, he's changed his look somewhat while he's been in Japan. He's shaved off his moustache. He looks uh, almost conventional. So it's AC Milan at the beginning of the second half who have the initiative as uh, it's the way they started the first half. Then got a lead, then conceded a goal at the back when just when they looked to be killing the game off. Is Shevchenko getting up? Abondensieri gets there well. That's a big hit, a beautiful hit to Iali. Iali turns and runs at him. Well, Iali goes for it. It's a bad ball. Should have been much better for Donnell on the right hand side. That was a clear opening on the counter attack. Offside against Shevchenko. I think he acknowledges there was a good pass and perhaps he just timed it wrong. But was he offside? Was he? Very close. Not too sure whether it was. But you always get the impression that Shevchenko will keep plugging away and he'll get there in the end. And he certainly has this season. Filippo Inzaghi, super people, as they call him, continues to warm up the alley. Challenges, but he's really got no chance against two bigger central defenders who cover well for each other. Costa Curta and Maldini. He's taken a bit of stick from behind. And is Tevez being prepared to come on? Difficult decision for the coach because he knows he's not 100% fit. And indeed, Tevez said before the game, if I were the coach, I wouldn't pick me, because I'm not quite right yet. But we'll see what sort of a decision he's going to make. But for the moment, they have a chance for Cassini to get a ball in for the big guys, Berdiso and uh, Schiavi at the back there. Not deep enough. It'll be picked up, though, by Rodriguez as Milan push out. It's a good chance here. And here goes uh, Battaglia trying to keep it in. Does well. Wasn't quite good enough the pass forward from Donet. Battaglia has had a, a, an effective but not as uh, powerful game as he usually has. But Diso does well. Good strength by Shevchenko, but outnumbered. Kanya, good captain's ball there. Wide on the right is Skilotto. Overlapping him will be Perea. And here's a chance there. Good ball in for Iali. And claiming the corner, but he's not going to get it. Was it a fair claim or not? There's a good ball into the near post. Oh, it's a corner. So I can understand his frustration. Take off nice control for Pirlo. But again, rather dangerously for Boca, it looks as if uh, Milan are running midfield. Cafu. Pirlo, there was so much space on the left hand side is Pankaro. Shevchenko comes out to help him. There's good movement here, and Boca are going to pay for it if they don't watch their step. Pirlo. Away by Canius coming back to help. Sadov, good strength. 
Nice little touch to Gattuso. They're playing around beautifully here. Pirlo drives. Good block by Scalvi. And Pirlo loses it for the first time. Donet moves forward. Donet still chasing. And that was uh, rather ambitious. Good break, but the pass wasn't good enough by Scalotto. Good leap by Pereira, but it's Milan in possession again. Game's very open. Surprised we haven't had more shots on goal. A lot of space in midfield. But the marking on the edge of the area and just inside it is tight. Forward goes Shevchenko, easily cut out by Clemente Rodriguez. It's a hard ball for Real, he's one hit at the knee height. Schiavi gets it out to Pereira, he's got time and space. Cassini. They miss Riquelme. Indeed, they tried to get him back at the beginning of the, the last stage of the Argentine Championship, getting back from uh, Barcelona, but he said that he wasn't coming back to unsafe Argentina because a member of his family had been kidnapped uh, while he was uh, playing there and uh, held to ransom, and he said he didn't fancy that again. And I think we can understand that. But it was a pity because they certainly miss him in midfield where at the moment AC Milan, I wouldn't say have all the aces, but they seem to have much of possession. Back down for Kaká. Well, we haven't seen much of him in the second half, but that was nicely done by Thomason. Good build-up down the right-hand side. And now we are going to have a substitution, and it uh, gives us a chance to see another of the great AC Milan stars, Filippo Inzaghi. And off comes the goal scorer, Thomason. He's done his job, but uh, to be fair, the partnership between Shevchenko and uh, Inzaghi has been prolific. And a round of applause for the Dane. <laughs> and on comes Inzaghi. He's been out of the game for a long time through injury. One wonders how sharp he is, but uh, with the way that uh, Milan approach, they wouldn't have brought him on unless he was 100% uh, fit to do the job. They have a, a very sophisticated medical staff and approach. The Milan lab analyzes every player's every move. And uh, as a result of that, they've improved their injury record, they, they believe, by 90%. It seems a very, very high figure, but um, they certainly got a massive squad, and most of them play when required. Zaghi was fouled there, so it's a free kick for Milan. Lining up with Shevchenko. Maldini's come round the back. Costa Curta and Cafu staying back to defend in case of the counter-attack. But the captain is in the hunt there. Oh, it's back in. And away by Cassini. Well, a beautiful far post ball, exactly what they wanted, and it looked as if uh, they got the opening there. Knocked back superbly here for Maldini, and blocked by Abondentieri, and away by Cassini. Corner, set off to take it. Maldini's still in there. Abontieri, good catch. And a good hit again. My word, he hits those ball out well. It's always happening to Iali, and that must be a booking. Cafu. Two Brazilians exchanging handshakes. But I think the yellow card was justified. seen a great triumph from him not so long ago of course has he led Brazil to uh, World Cup success here and he was coming back to play for Yokohama F Marinos but at uh, the last minute he uh, what they say reneged on his contract but uh, changed his mind is probably a more polite way of doing it but uh, 
the rumor is that he halved his wages as a result of it because he accepted a fairly low contract from AC Milan to stay another year. Here's Kanya to Cassini to Rodriguez on this left hand side. It's a deep, deep one and too deep. Japanese league season incidentally has uh, just ended with uh, the team who plays here, Yokohama F Marinos, the winners of both stages, so there wasn't the usual playoff, and the Empress Cup, the uh, knockout cup competition, got underway just recently with some good games this weekend. Average gate for Marinos here is about 20,000, and they have a problem with this uh, World Cup stadium as to how they can make it pay. Uh, it's difficult, and it's running at a loss at the moment, even though they have uh, something like 96 events a year here. Scalotto couldn't get hold of it. It's now Cafu. Continual movement by the Boca substitutes. They're all of them warming up as we watch that one uh, go out of touch. Into touch, are they? Hey, people! The Ali will fight for the ball, but he doesn't often keep it. Now, Kaká loses to Pereira. Gattuso battling as ever. Free kick. Referee in there quickly. But we have another injured player here. Cassini and uh, Gattuso, who've had a couple of moments during the course of the game, and it looks as if it's going to continue here. Gattuso, the player who said that... Um, He'd quite like to play for Boca one day, which I suggest is fairly unlikely. But it's uh, Scalotto who's down. Guillermo Barros Scalotto. Still, the conversation continues. Scalotto's been taken off for treatment. The game is going to be restarted with a free kick. Now's the time when concentration's got to be high. In for Pirlo. Well, that's a great ball, and out comes the goalkeeper. Well, a lovely pass there for Inzaghi to almost get away. And again, it came from Pirlo. Difficult one for him, runs into trouble. Not his fault, it wasn't a great pass. Great ball from Pirlo. Inzaghi almost there, touch wasn't quite right. Kaká had a strike at it. The goalkeeper, I think, had the near post covered, but that was more dangerous than it looked. First of all, well, no, there wasn't much of a target for him. Been a quiet second half for the Brazilian. Well won by Kaká, but only to Cassini, to Canya, to Rodriguez. Yali trying a little fancy touch, but they're too tight, they're too close to the marking defenders. Control's got to be absolutely exquisite, or they'll have it. It's down for Pirlo to Kaká. Shevchenko. Shevchenko holding off Perea, using Sedov. 
Pillow again. Pancaro. Some of his crosses have been poor. Pillow and again. Battaglia almost getting it through to Inzaghi once more. Some of those passes coming through from midfield now are really testing the Boca defence. Now, is this the one that all the Boca supporters have been uh, waiting for? Tevez. Comes from... Uh, got a poor background. They've had to move him out of one of the rougher areas of Buenos Aires, put him in the house and uh, feed him properly. Yali does well to get it in to Baris Escalotto, but not quite good enough as he aimed for Donet. Well, that's not a good, particularly good one. It's picked up by Baris Escalotto. There goes Kanye. Baris Escalotto still there. And offside, the flag's gone up. Referee has blown the whistle, but there was an opening there when Milan made a schoolboy error and lost possession in a very dangerous area. And should Scalotti have moved it on to somebody else? Well, here he comes. Or is he? We certainly get a warm reception from the Boca supporters. And I imagine in Argentina they will go mad to see him on. Pirlo. But really, Boca have got to get tighter in midfield. There's too much space, and they're going to pay the price if people like Gattuso and Pirlo get these passes away consistently. Gattuso to Sedov and Costa Curdo, who's had quite a, a quiet time. And as a 37-year-old, he'll enjoy that. That's another good ball from him. Costa Curdo again. He's wanting a little bit more movement. Here's Berdiso policing this one out. Wrestling a little bit with uh, Cafu. Now then, Carlos Tevez, don't tell me he's going to put his top on again. It's quite sharp out here tonight. It's been a brilliant day. Bright sunshine. But now, we started at uh, 10 degrees, and uh, it must be a good bit lower than that now. It's a gamble by the coach, but uh, when's he going to take it? Battaglia. To Kanya. To Schilotto. Muscled out of it by Sidorf. Stronger. And persuaded to foul him and concedes a free kick. Sidorf. Very hard to knock off the ball. Tremendous balance. Zaghi looking for the long ball forward. This is Shevchenko's difficult ball forward. Does well to get a foot to it and chase a return. Shevchenko. Good recovery tackle. And it goes off the Ukrainian and gets nothing. It hasn't been his day so far, but my word, he's worked hard. Now we're going to get what could be the trump card for Boca Juniors. A couple of instructions from his coach. Checking with the FIFA fourth official that he's got the name right. I think it's a name we'll be hearing quite a bit of. Bayern Munich have already made a bid for him. A couple of other clubs would certainly take him, but uh, Bocker is saying he's got to stay here for two years. He could, of course, and should, of course, have been playing in the World Youth Championship, but uh, he decided not to and then decided to take the AFA, the Argentine Football Association, to court, which didn't pl uh, please FIFA at all, but really it just dragged the whole thing out until in the end he couldn't play, which was the object of the exercise. But he's not on the field yet, he's waiting on the touchline as uh, Boca knock it around. Hey. 
back to Schiavi and forward goes Iali but now we can make the change before the free kick is taken so coming off and I uh, don't think he much likes that is Escalotto the uh, highly experienced very successful player for Boca third and possibly last of these major games here in Japan <clears throat> he's played in but he won't be there for the final whistle he's certainly taking his time getting off as the man coming on is the big big hope for Boca not only here but for the future his father is here too to watch him he's a battle hard 19 year old Carlos Tevez Well, let's see what he can do. He hasn't played since November the 2nd because of a knee injury. Pirlo, no foul, but Talia has it. What's Tevez's first touch going to be? Here it is. And here goes Tanya. Well, it's not a bad start. They've got a corner out of it. Certainly got a touch early on, and Kenya had a clear side at goal. That was deflected back to the captain, and it was well over. But now they're so good at these, as we've already seen in the first half when Schiave had a good header. Schiave gets up again. Well, it almost worked once more. Schiave gets it back to the near post, and... Uh, Donet came in hard, but couldn't get over the header. They haven't had possession, but they have had a couple of good chances. Schiavi again, then Donet. Not quite under control. Now, is it Rui Costa to come on? Possibly for Kakada thought he's gone a little bit quiet. But certainly Boca have got a new lease of life when so much of the possession have been with the Italians. Rui Costa who makes more goals than he scores, but uh, he makes plenty. Pirlo, nice touch to Cafu. Kaká. Free kick. A bit unnecessary because he was running into trouble and... Uh, I think it would have been caught by Berdiso, but it's a free kick now in a dangerous angle. It is Rui Costa who's going to come on eventually. Not just yet, I don't think. Because Maldini has come up here. Pancaro is also there with, with Cafu and Costa Cota at the back. Kick from Pirlo. Overhead didn't quite work, but the Japanese uh, spectators like the idea of it. Gattuso, nice header, but Battaglia read it well. Yali holding his man off, but not totally successfully. Pump forward by Costa Curda, not good enough. A little bit better in possession now. Ford goes Tevez, but uh, is it comfortably cut out by Captain Maldini. He goes in Zaki onto this one unless they can clear it. This game's still in the balance. Can Boca get Tevez in possession? He's there, he's got it, he's lost it. Picked up again by Kanya. Rodriguez and Kanya, they've had a couple of nice runs together. This looks like a promising one too. Here's uh, Cassini, and he comes back to Battaglia when uh, Tevez was on the edge of the box, looking for a bit of possession. Cassini, I think they're enjoying this, not reversal slightly, but here's a good turn by Yale, and a tumble by Tevez, no foul, 
He picked it up again. Kanya, good bit of play. And that is a free kick. Now they're really fighting hard, Boca, and you can see why they've got such a good record in the Copa Libertadores. They look to have lost the initiative for long spells in this game, but they're still in it, they're still fighting, as uh, AC Milan prepare to make another substitution. Coming off is Kaká, as we thought. He had a good couple of good moments in the first half. He hit the post. He's certainly one for the future, but now... A master comes on, a player of terrific experience, Rui Costa, who again can open locked doors. Angelotti, a little bit anxious here. He knows that uh, Cassini can float them into the far post to Schiavi. Hit him into the near post where he can be flicked on. Now he's coming wide to Rodriguez. And it wasn't well hit. Again, worked in uh, training, but the execution not 100%. So has he got a hint now that it could turn Bocca's way? And will Ancelotti be a winner of this game as a player and as a coach? Well, still to be resolved. Yali gives it away. Tevez. Nice little touch in, but nicely cut out too by Gattuso. Wasted. A little bit hopeful, those long balls, trying to get uh, Shevchenko and Inzaghi away when they're both making the same sort of runs. One of them usually drops off and uh, picks up a shorter ball. Gattuso. Rui Costa's first touch, Cafu loses it. They're fighting for possession here, Boca. And it rebounds rather fortunately for Donet. Donet comes off his man well. Um, rather, Tevez comes off his man well to keep possession. Cassini to Battaglia. And now it's Boca pushing forward more. Certainly the Tevez Substitution is giving them a boost, if only in spirit. But it's showing well here as Rodriguez goes forward. Smothered well by Dida and with help from Maldini. But they're showing quite a bit of adventure, getting both fullbacks forward as we move into the later stages of the game with uh, 10 minutes to go of the 90 minutes. Pirlo to Sadov. Pirlo, and that was a bad one. Not sure whether he was expecting Pankaro to move. But it's a throw in from quite a difficult area, actually, because you've still got to get the ball away and it's easy to lose possession. And they have lost possession. Rui Costa. Costa, good turn. Costa makes goals and sometimes scores them. Well, not often. Corner. Rui Costa said if they made a film of the goals he scored, it would be a short one. If they made a film of the goals he makes, it might be a long one. 13 for Inzaghi and uh, 8 for... Shevchenko, his corner, and good catch. Uses a short one to Battaglia with Iali on the left here. Cattuso gets a bit of a challenge in. And you can see the frustration of some of the Boca players when Iali lost possession so easily there. Sadov. Foul. game still very much in the balance and of course as you know we can go into extra time and penalties it's the silver goal rule here that's a good ball to Pirlo trying to pick out those front two of Inzaghi and Shevchenko 
They keep running, they keep looking for those openings, but the passes through have not quite found them in this game. Pirlo to Shevchenko. Cafu. And a throw in. You get the feeling that one goal is going to turn it or win it. And Kenny has it. Space on the right hand side, but it's quite comfortably cut out by uh, Costa Curler as they aim for Carlos Torres. At 19. Uh, comfortably the youngest player on the field and indeed in either squads although Boca have got uh, two or three 20 year olds got a very prolific youth development scheme that's a difficult kick from the goalkeeper is lucky that, that went through Battaglia for Yale to chase and it's quite comfortable for Costa Curta not a good kick from the goalkeeper Didier though now the space on the right hand side for Donet if anybody wants to swing it over there Battaglia instead finds Perea and now Donet is closed down a little bit Cassini they're working the ball better though Tevez comes off his man decides against it not taking any chances is Tevez holds it well uh, this is uh, Iali rather Cassini gets a return this is good play now Perea Almost lost it. Pereira shoots and doesn't test the goalkeeper. Not sure whether he should have tried that one with so many people coming forward to support him. But they are getting better possession. They are looking more threatening as a as a unit as opposed to these occasional breakaways. So by no means is this over yet. Rodriguez and Kenya. That's not a bad ball. Well covered by Costa Curta though. Hard one for Inzaghi. Somewhat clumsy clearance by the goalkeeper. But safe enough, and in these circumstances, that's uh, better than style. But it's certainly AC Milan in possession. Pirlo and Seedorf with the left back free uh, on that other flank. Seedorf, Seedorf shoots, and it hit Schiavi. I don't think he knew much about it. At the time when his side were comfortably on top, now. It's in the balance, and with only five minutes of normal time left, certainly one goal is going to finish it. Pirlo, Seedorf, have they got a little bit extra in them? Here's Costa Curta trying to get Shevchenko in there, not far off it. Tevez, strong, and gets a free kick when he didn't want it. He didn't want that free kick at all. He thought he got away, but uh, to be fair, I think uh, a couple of Milan players might have stopped. But it gives them a chance to push players up. But he certainly turned nimbly. Battaglia. Good play by Donet. Now Battaglia pushing forward. Will he have a go? Tevez. Oh, and Battaglia! He had an opening and he knows it. This is going to be his last game for the club before he goes to Spain. And he had a chance certainly to hit the target there. It was nicely set up by Carlos Tevez. And a rebound. And that won't do. Good play by Maldini. Classic play. Sedorf. 
he loses it. Trying to cut the trick switch. Didn't come off. But it's still Milan in possession. Bancaro does well. Maldini's still in there. That's a foul. No. Slay on. Maldini protesting, but they're one down at the back. Pirlo's dropping back to cover. Rodriguez pushing forward. Here's Tevez. And it was a timely tackle there. Maldini's back now, so they're in order. Boca fans still singing. Tried to get the free kick, can you? But there wasn't much chance of that. Well, so little time left if we're going to win it in the 90 minutes. Rodriguez making it back there for Shevchenko. Here goes Rui Costa. That was a difficult one and he didn't quite manage it. Well, extra time and penalties in uh, this match is by no means unusual. But we haven't reached that stage yet. And it's certainly not anything that Milan would wish. They've got a pretty packed program ahead. But for Boca, who had a terrible journey here and certainly more tired, this is their last game. They can give it absolutely everything before their summer break. A minute of normal time left, still 1-1 in the 24th Toyota Cup. Is it going to be a mistake or a touch of brilliance to turn it for one side or the other? It's only a few mistakes. Now, Yali, Donet couldn't get it. Ferrer uses his strength well. Careless ball, bit of tiredness. Pirlo. 30 seconds or less left. Plus time added on. Zedorf. There's still time for somebody to win it. Not with passes like that. And it's going to be three minutes of added time here. So plenty of time. Free kick. Chip forward. And in goes Inzaghi as uh, Schiavi's header wasn't quite as direct as he would want it. Now, Rodriguez, Tevez, and uh, Iali, rather. Iali turns into trouble. I don't think Tevez would have done that. Shevchenko, done some tremendous running, and still going, but he's outnumbered, and he's not going to get a free kick for that. Kanya, good play, beats Gattuso. And there's a bit of space for him now. He must be tired. He's done some runs down the left-hand side, and he runs it out. It's not quite good enough. AC Milan uh, lost two games uh, in the Champions League this season, but they won their group, and they're through to the second round where they're going to play Sparta Prague. Uh, they're unbeaten in Serie A. But they look as if they might struggle a little bit here. Maldini quickly gets to it, but they're doing their best to keep Boca in the game. Good play by Seidorf. Is this the last thrust for 
Milan before we move into extra time. Bokra fighting hard. Here comes Battaglia. And here's Iali and Tevez. That was almost a touch that won it. So quick. Iali did well, to be fair. Little touch there. And over. Not far over. Tevez so close to winning it in the dying seconds. Cassini. Well, with 15 seconds or so left, it'll be amazing if somebody does win this one, but it's important for Boca not to give it away. Tevez to Perea. A couple of seconds left. Cassini forward, and the whistle goes for the end of 90 minutes, and it stands. AC Milan won, Boca Juniors won, Carlos Tevez, I would say it would be cruel to declare that he had a chance there, but certainly there was uh, an opportunity with perhaps if he had been in the game a little bit more in recent weeks as opposed to on the treatment table, he might have put it a little bit closer to the line. OK, we're about to start the first period of extra time. With the 19-year-old telling the experienced players behind him, nothing should be done. Shevchenko run hard the whole of the 90 minutes, hasn't had a break. It might yet come. So the Russian referee gets the first period of extra time underway here at the Yokohama Stadium. Uh, if you want a pointer, uh, when AC Milan won the Toyota Cup for the first time, they won it in extra time. That was in uh, 1989 when they beat uh, Nacional Medellin of uh, Colombia. This, of course, is the silver system where if a goal is scored in the first period of 15 minutes, we go to the end of that 15 minutes to see if uh, uh, another one appears. And here's Tevez with a snatched shot. And they've started brightly again. A little touch. Not quite on song with that one. A little bit over hit. But it was interesting to read, if you can, the body language of the two teams in that small break between the 90 minutes and the restart here. The uh, Argentine side with the coach goading them on were very upbeat and it looked as if they were very much in for the fight here. Quite a few of the AC Milan players looked a little bit tired, but there's no way of really interpreting if that meant anything. But here's uh, Perea. That's a giveaway to Costa Curta. Trying to find uh, Inzaghi, he's very much on his own. Now, Gattuso. Well, they've had plenty of space in midfield and they haven't done terribly well with it in terms of creating chances, AC Milan, but let's see whether extra time will make a difference as certainly the game inevitably will slow down a little bit and open up. Lines flags up for offside and the whistle is gone. We had extra time in 1985 when Juventus and Argentinos Juniors put on a great show here and that eventually went to penalties. We also had extra time in uh, 87 between uh, Porto and uh, Peñarol. So by no means is this an unusual occurrence. Sometimes it does drag on a little bit and uh, 
That happened in 1995 when Ajax fought out a, a goalless draw with Gremio and we eventually went to penalties. But uh, there's been some lively moments in here and with uh, Tevez on and Rui Costa on and still Shevchenko and uh, Inzaghi looking for openings, there's uh, no reason to believe that uh, this won't produce more goals. Here's Kanye. Yali. Acknowledging perhaps he might not have done that, but at least they're, they're more confident now and having a, a couple of pots of goal. But when you consider how many changes Boca have made over the years, selling players consistently as uh, all Argentine sides do because of the economic situation, it's a really tremendous performance to be able to perform consistently at this level, whether they win or lose. And they put up a tremendous show here already. But when you win the Copa Libertadores and then sell three of your best players, it's very, very uh, discouraging in some ways, but because it's part of their routine, because it gives younger players another chance, they seem to do remarkably well out of it. Whereas. Uh, Ancelotti there brought 24 players to this game from Italy. We've got players like Simic, Nesta, Redondo, Borriello, Bocchi, uh, who are not even getting on the bench. And of course, back home, there is Rivaldo, who can't get a game in a training match. So the difference between the two clubs in their resources is quite extraordinary but the difference on the field is not very marked and Boca at the moment are giving as good as they're getting Cassini Kanya it's going to be difficult getting past the uh, White shirts without hitting a hopeful ball, so they want to, to drag him out a little bit. But Iso doesn't want to risk it. That was a, a tricky one straight to Battaglia, and that wasn't a good one. But it's come again to Boca. Battaglia doing well in the tight situation. Good turn by Iali. Ferrer beats Inzaghi. Battaglia is coming more into the game, I must say, in midfield. And here's Iali, and he couldn't quite turn it onto his right foot. But the pass is through from uh, midfield, getting better. Mind you, they've got two players to aim at now. Playing through the middle instead of down, uh, down the flanks. Seidorf and Pankerel to Inzaghi. Schiavi fighting with him. No play on, no foul. Theatrical, but unproductive. Here's Pirlo. Gattuso couldn't turn, turned into a brick wall. Cassini. Now, on the right-hand side, we've got uh, Perea. Donet has come back to help. Cassini. Good challenge by Seedorf, followed by Pirlo. Going to be picked up by Rui Costa. Clever. Pirlo. He rarely gives the ball away. Still 1-1. Drum beats, the Boca drum, of course, but not a great deal of excitement from the uh, Japanese supporters here. Now, Pankara has a chance to get a half decent cross in with Shevchenko and Inzaghi in there, but he, he hasn't managed many decent crosses from that left hand side, which is a pity. Sadov, I don't think he's going to get that one. 
does. Clever. And so does Cafu. Rodriguez, good challenge. Now can Boca break. There goes Tevis through the middle. This is Iali. Rodriguez is helping from the back. Wide on the right there is Donet. He's always pushing up here as the extra man. It's gone wide. It's gone too wide. And he's lost it. That was a good opening. And now they're stretched. But not too many Milan players are coming up to support. They look the tighter of the two. That's Costa Curdo who's crept up into uh, a sort of midfield position. Maldini taking no chances, and we start again. AC Milan have the record for the most appearances in this particular game. But records don't mean anything at the moment. 1-1 one, one in extra time. With not too many chances for Inzaghi and Shevchenko. Oh, again, the control was quite there. And it enabled the Milan defender to close him down. Now, Battaglia bursting forward. Yali couldn't control it. Tries to turn into his man too many times. Battaglia picks it up. Now, Kenya. Tevez can't get the ball at the moment. He's coming wide on his flank to get a bit of possession. Here he is. It's a good one to Donet. Oh dear, overdone and lost, but it's gone out, I think, to the relief of the uh, Boca players out there, because that was a bit careless. Important occasion, of course, for Boca Juniors, not only as a club, but as individual players, and they're very much in the world market here. They know that uh, the agents will come raiding, as they often do. And this match is obviously a very good shot window for one or two. Particularly Berdiso at the back. He's a 22-year-old defender who uh, is highly thought of in Europe. Cassini, well, Kenny is going to go a bit to get that. He was tight in midfield when that ball came down the middle. Cassini did well to pick that up. Here's Tevez. Tevez still going. Coming in there. Back pass and cleared. Just ran it a little too far forward. Free kick. Schiavi on. Inzaghi. Right, they amble up towards the restart, but there's going to be uh, a substitution. Gattuso, on comes Ambrosini, who's somewhat unlucky not to be in the starting lineup. So Ambrosini adds to the strength in midfield. He's been having a good time in the, in the first choice side, but trying to play Kaká, then somebody had to go. Ooh, that's an awkward one, and it looks as if he's hurt himself, uh, Pere, in that. Uh, Rather clumsy clearance. So Ambrosini on a corner for AC Milan. 
Not a bad time to get a goal here as we move towards the end of the first period. It'll have to go for 15 minutes, but there's danger here. Not with kicks like that. And it's Battaglia who's now on the clearance. On the right-hand side is a chase for Iali. Quality play. Now they're just pumping them about the place to see if we can produce something. Leaving the other side, no answer at all. No time to get back into it. Tevez giving the instructions as well as um, holding the ball. It's a decent one. But Donet couldn't keep hold of it. A minute and a half of this first period. The goal here would be almost impossible to answer. Well played by Sedorf. Now Pirlo. Can they produce a bit of magic? Shevchenko. Free kick. Now then. This is a chance, and it'll surely be a last chance in this period. If they don't score, of course, they go then into the second period of extra time. But if they score now, there's hardly any time left for Boca to reply. Great danger here for the South American champions. And a last chance, possibly, for AC Milan. But Captain Maldini is in there. Carlos Bianchi, the coach, is going mad on the touchline. They want to make a substitution, even at this stage. Referee says no. It's away by Battaglia. Andy Ali. And the Rodriguez, and now the chase is on at the other end. With Tevez fighting with Cafu. Cafu wins. No, Tevez is going again. Battaglia going again. It's almost all over in this period. And we will eventually get uh, a substitution. Carlos Bianchi really protesting towards the officials. And the end of the first half. Nil-nil. So we will go to a full 30 minutes of extra time, whatever happens. Meanwhile, the coach is getting quickly to... Does Jerez come in or not? Now, the test is, who's got the energy, who's got the concentration to put something together and turn this game and win these two trophies? It's asking a lot. It's been very competitive. Tiredness has obviously crept in. But there's still everything to play for. So we're away, the second period of extra time here in uh, Yokohama, everything to play for still. It's been a hell of a contest. It's been a cat and mouse uh, to a certain extent in, in midfield. Bocker have done well to come back into it. But you still expect Inzaghi or Shevchenko to come up with something. That was a good bit of play by Sedov. Tripped. Now, Ambrosini and Pirlo chipping forward and Shevchenko and beaten out. That's the best chance, the only chance he's had of the game and it was a great save by Abon Dentieri. Good hit, good bit of play coming out fast to block it. Corner then for AC Milan. Maldini in there again. Seidorf. 
Kanye gets a boot to it. It's Ambrosini. Good touch, Battaglia. And his headband. It's certainly been uh, pretty impressive in the later stages. Battaglia again, he's controlling uh, things in midfield in many ways. Donet. Cassini. Hopeful. Wasteful. Schiavi for Yali. That's a nice bit of control. Now he needs a bit of help. Gets it from Donet. Got Tevez in the middle. He's got a few players in the middle, but first of all, he's got to get the ball there. Now he needs help out here. Plays for the corner. Wins it. Schiavi, Berdiso, Pereira. They're all coming up. It's a chance to knock one in here for Boca. Donet with a kick. Not deep enough, and Seidorf should have had it. Back in by Donet. Schiavi challenges. Yali chasing. Now he needs help. Well, not a bad cross, but quite comfortable in the end for Brazilian Dida. Now, tiredness there as Pirlo failed to register exactly where he was as he struggled to control it. Tevez to Donet. It comes Battaglia, Battaglia still going. Cassini now. Kanya wide to Tevez. Can't quite get it away from his feet. Tevez tries to turn. Free kick against Carlos Tevez. I think uh, the experienced Italian defender Pancaro was not out Fox there. and Seidorf. Forward goes Shevchenko. Shevchenko here. Now into trouble. Blocked by Seidorf, but it's only a goal kick. Well, in many ways, AC Milan have shown some good touches, but I think in many people expected slightly more in uh, quite a few areas. They certainly haven't produced uh, the openings up front that uh, they have in, say, Serie A and the early stages of the Champions League this season. Although they've lost two Champions League games, they were really uh, way out, way ahead of their standard in that uh, particular division. So, Pankara to Sedov. Italia awkward one but they get it away somehow now it's Tevez he hasn't really got a lot of support finds Kanye on the left Yali moving around industriously as ever Tevez doesn't control it scruffy now but that's the way these games go when you get into extra time somebody's going to produce a bit of skill and win the damn thing that's a free kick They want to take it quickly. It's gone to Ambrosini. Shevchenko still moving around, trying to get a bit of space. Sedov against Perea. Lost it. That's a good ball. How hard the alley works when he keeps appearing to run into physical brick walls. Ambrosini, surprised to get it. Cafu wide on the right. Costa Curda. Pushing forward adventurously, finding Cafu with space and time. Pirlo switching it to Inzaghi. 
Shevchenko's in the middle, but he can't get the ball in there. A good challenge by Perea, the Colombian. Nice little back heel by Maldini. Very, very clever in the circumstances. Might have given it away. Berdiso away, and, and a good header too. Rodriguez down the left-hand flank. He's full of running still, when a lot of players around him are pretty tired. Kanya. And Tevez. Tevez still going, and a free kick. Great burst, he's certainly got plenty of energy and uh, aggression. Nice little run there. He was almost through. Well, what sort of uh, effort can Cassini come up with here? Or is this a chance to drive one? Is this a chip to the far post or are we going for glory here? It's going to be a difficult one for Dino. Is this Donet to have a go? Or is it going to come square? This is going to be a big problem for AC Milan. The referee not happy. Now, Donet deflected. And stopped from going out acrobatically, so it was all a bit of an anti-climax, which was a pity. Because we could do with a bit of a lift here. That's a big, big boot by Adida. Not a very good clearance by Berdiso. He has two bites in it, doesn't get the second one particularly well either. Play on, and Rui Costa in for Shevchenko. Schiavi to Tevez, down to Donet, still in. Oh, and it's won, well won by Seidorf and Pancaro. Here's Ambrosini on the right-hand side. There's a lot of freedom, but they're going straight down the middle, and perhaps that was ill-advised. Now, Tevez, he's got help, he needs help. Don't know what that was quite. The alley was... Uh, miles away from there now they're all getting a bit anxious he's short of match practice the rest of them are tired how's it all going to end in tears for somebody uh, i don't doubt but we're getting closer and closer to the dreaded penalties which nobody really likes, although AC Milan showed their mettle in the European final. Play on, now he's given the kick. Gave the advantage, then when he break down, he gave the kick. Right. Now, Pancaro's going in there, so is Maldini, Ambrosini is there too. Shevchenko is particularly good in the air, but we want a decent ball in there. And Pirlo's the man who can do it. Straight in and scored! Inzaghi, but the flag is up. The flag is up, it won't count. Well, it was a good free kick dropped in front of the players. Were they in an offside position before it was hit? Well, they're offside now. So, the linesman, the assistant referee, is perfectly correct. About four of them were in there, but the flag was up instantly. Fooled me, fooled in target, but it didn't count. Set off. And that was a bit fortunate, getting a goal kick from that one. Well, they're all looking a bit anxious now. Those who've uh, made the journey, not sure how many uh, of the 66,000 crowd here 
came from Italy, but it's something in the region of uh, 600 to 1,000. There's plenty of people, of course, who are living in this part of the world, not necessarily Japan, who are Milan supporters and would make the trip. But certainly they're being outnumbered by the Boca supporters, and in terms of noise, there's no contest. But it's 1-1 and even, very even, out there as we're ticking away towards penalties. Zedorf, Zaghi running into an elbow, he, he thought. So we have had uh, an offside goal. We've had uh, a brilliant save by the Boca goalkeeper from Shevchenko's shot. He hits those kicks superbly. Too much for Kanye to chase, especially deep into extra time. We haven't got the energy for that. Got to have passes to feet. the sideline the Boca coach Carlos Bianchi a record goal scorer himself 367 goals in Argentina and France just hoping they can pull one off here this is a chance now for Donet oh, that was but it didn't work with Tevez in the middle and Kanya uh, there to help him now back to Perea. Oh, he's lost it. And he's given a free kick. Have they got the energy to kick it into the middle? Well, they're putting all the big guys in there, that's for certain. Battaglia, Berdiso, Schiavi, and uh, Perea's gone in there. This is what... Boca Hope is a golden opportunity because they're excellent in the air, particularly Schiavi at the back post. They've given Dida a few problems with these uh, set pieces. It's Cassini with a kick, they're breaking away on a rehearsed move. Put in by Kanya, and here's Tevez! And Schiavi, over! The defender taking a hasty shot from the edge of the area, and it looked a little bit like it. He had a bit more time, easy to say from here, but it looked as if Tevez was in here, well cleared, and it comes to Schiavi, get it down, couldn't quite manage it. So they've all had their moments. Italia and Ambrosini battling there, but it means that AC Milan have got possession. They shouldn't really have had in those circumstances. Kanya. Oh, Tevez is on his own here, but the mistake by Costa Curta went unpunished. Costa Curta, you may remember, AC Milan against Velez made a couple of mistakes and they lost. Now, Shevchenko. And that is the end of extra time. And that is the end of normal action. Business will be resumed with penalties. It's dragged on a little bit. They've had their moments. Now it's a test of nerve. has such a good record of saving penalties. World Club Championship when he played uh, in uh, Brazil, he saved key shots. Then he saved three in the European Champions Final uh, against Juventus. That's a hell of a record.
So first up is the man who's had a superb game. And really deserves to be on the winning side, but life's not like that. It's Andrea Pielo, the 24-year-old for AC Milan. Against Roberto Abondanzieri. And he misses. A great save, but Pielo, of all people, would have been expected to get that one in. Not a great start for the European champions. Good save, but uh, not, not a spectacular one. Now then, Rolando Schiavi for Boca Juniors. He takes penalties in the normal course of events. So this won't be uh, beyond him, but he's got to still put it in the back of the net. Schiavi next. Good one. The initiative to Boca Juniors. Good penalty. Well struck. Next up. Rui Costa for AC Milan. Scores. Well hit. They're on the mark. Nicely hit penalty, very low, almost impossible for the goalkeeper. But they remain as anxious as ever. Next for Dida is Battaglia. 23-year-old Sebastian Battaglia on his way to Spain to play for Villarreal. His last kick, possibly, for Boca Juniors. And not a good one either. So they both failed, and both goalkeepers have saved. Poor old Battaglia, another way to go. Okay. He guessed right. Now it's Clarence Seedorf who took one in the Champions final, and he missed. What can Bondancieri do this time? And what about Sadov? What did he learn from Old Trafford just a few months ago? Nerve-wracking. He missed again! Clarence Seedorf with a fantastic record at this level. Three champions medals with three clubs, but the Dutch cannot take a penalty. The history of Dutch football is written around penalty misses, and they've missed another one. Albeit for the club, but you've got to make the goalkeeper make a save at least, but to miss the target is just Awful for him and for AC Milan. Next. <laughs> Donet. Donet has done it. They've taken the lead again. Two one. It's the initiative with Bok. Now then, the most uh, experienced in terms of age, anyhow, of players on the field. And there's a bit of a uh, mind game going on here between uh, Billy Costa-Curta and 
find the Boca goalkeeper. Costa Kjord has really got to get this. They're running out of opportunities. They've missed two out of three. Costa Kjord. Oh, missed another one. It's absolutely extraordinary. Costa Kjord's miss means that if they score, it's that. What an awful penalty, that's the worst penalty I've ever seen, he hit the ground. It's extraordinary, they've missed three out of four. And Caschini's going to come in here to get what would be the third and decisive goal for Boca. This is incredible. Alfredo Cassini. And the Boca fans are going mad here. Cassini to put it in and put it totally in control of Boca, and they've won it. Boca Juniors are the winners on penalties. Can you believe it? The Milan players go off with their heads hanging low. They've blown it completely. Cassini with the decisive kick. Boca Juniors have won the 24th Toyota Cup. Almost by default, the penalties were appalling by uh, AC Milan. It's hard to believe. And we didn't even get as far as Shevchenko. And uh, Carlos Bianchi has done it again. It's another title. The third time in four years they've been here, and the second time they've won it. And for Bianchi, this is the third time he's won it. No coach has ever achieved that. So records are tumbling in the most extraordinary way. Because Booker didn't really have to do much to win that. They won it because Milan were abject when it came to taking those vital kicks. They completely lost their nerve. Pirlo, poor kick. Rui Costa's was a good one. Sadov missed the target. Costa Curta, probably the worst kick I've ever seen in my life. You just don't expect it of players at that level. But when uh, Cassini put his in, it meant that uh, they'd scored with Schiavi, they'd scored with Donet, and Battaglia's miss didn't matter. Good saves by Abondanzieri, but appalling shots by AC Milan. Two cups, of course. The medals presented by Nicolas Leos of Comabon. The man who's shown great faith in this particular tournament. Comabon, very keen that uh, the Toyota Cup is, uh, is maintained. There's noises about it going to two legs or clashing with the World Club Championship. Comabon is giving it terrific support, uh, and you can see that by their representation here, whereas uh, UEFA and FIFA are very much involved in the FIFA Gala this weekend in, uh, in Zurich. And uh, while they are well represented here, not so many big guns as Comabon. So the medals. And now the trophies. Two trophies, of course, the Intercontinental Cup and the Toyota Cup. It's a remarkable sequence of success for Boca Juniors.